down to one friendly. Top four last stop standing. Easy peasy. What's up, guys? Today we're doing an operator guy on how to play as Ash in Rainbow Six Siege 2024 in Operation Deadly Omen. So, a lot of changes with Ash this season, and uh, we're going to be talking about all of it and how to rank up and win more matches while playing Ash. Let's get to it. So, here you have the D36 and the R4 seat, uh, two five scopes all around, and then one X's and uh, iron sights. Honestly, not a bad gun if you're trying to rock it. Pretty stable, pretty, you know, pretty normal. But nothing really bad with the D36. It's been try and shoot good. Good gun forever. One the gun I kind of want to focus on today is the R4C. A little bit more damage. Recoil is not as bad as you would think, and then a little bit faster fire rate. And it has an ACOG. Ash R4C ACOG is back today, baby. You can run a 2.5 or you can run a hollow. Honestly, either one's fine. Vertical grip, all that fun stuff. I mean, in between like flash shatters, I mean, on the R4C, I probably would run a flash shatter because it will get a little bit jumpy if you try to use anything else. On the G36, you could probably try to run a suppressor or an extended barrel if you're wanting to go down that route. Honestly, between these two guns, you really can use either one. Both of them are solid. Try which one, try them both and see which one suits you the best. They're both really fun. I, I can't really say that one's like way worse than the other. I've been leaning toward the R4C because R4C ACOG has been like a thing like years ago and I've been really like liking the, the feel of it. And then you have the pistols. I prefer a pistol that does a little bit more damage, even though it has a little bit less ammo, because when you bring a pistol out, it's usually a clutch situation where you just need to get bullets on them, so I like that. And then between breaching charges and claymores, if you're trying to work some vertical, or you're trying to take like more of the map, breaching charges are good. If you're trying to work windows, claymores are better. So, as if the loadout. Okay, now let's talk about Ash's ability. The breaching round. So, I like about this. Let's see your entry focus. You're entering a room like this, right? You're entering in. Going in, going in. You just boom, pull up the wall. Boom, you have climb saw on everything. Here's the R4C with an ACOG, by the way. It is a lot more stable than you would think. You do have to pull it quite a bit, but it is mostly vertical. Here's what the recoil looks like. It is mostly vertical, but with training, you just keep that, you know, right where you need it to be. So that's why I've personally been liking the R4C ACOG quite a bit. Reach around. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Like you can use it on the floor, you can use it on whatever you need to. But let's say someone's up there holding that walk-in through the operations room. You can go underneath, flush them out of that area, destroy a mirror that might be on that wall, and then you got to push in. There's not that many operators in the game I can work vertical anymore because grenades were nerfed. You can't cook them, so like really you just have Ash, like Zofia, Bach, like not many options, but Ash is one of the uh, better options if you're like trying to work the vert, and then you're also trying to win a lot of gunfights. Because again, you have the speed, which is really nice to have. You can run around, take your fights, and you'll be good to go. And the reason why I like having breaches charges, sometimes I'll go in above a site, I'll use my Ash breaches like on the floor, so I have two breaches, and I also have three extra ones, so I technically have five breaches to really really work the vert if I don't want to bring like a ram or something. I, don't, I want, let's say I want a little bit more speed so I can work the vertical with breach and charges. I don't know what I do. So now we're going to go to some Ash gameplay, really talk about why Ash is a good operator. All right, now let's go through some Ash clips with the I4C. So here I'm in a 1v5, nothing great about this situation, but we don't give up. I'm going to get the fuser. They jump out on me, but I place my claymores down there. I hit one claymore. That goes for revive. We take them both out. I'm too crazy. I grab the fuser. Ash breach you open the window. Just try to get in as fast as I can. I run up. Many people may be like, why aren't you droning this kind of situation? Well, if I'm droning a 1v3, I give them time to move around. I can't play off my audio. And anything I drone anyways is going to be old intel. So here I'm playing mostly gun up. That guy was on, the, on camera, I think. I'm not sure what happened there. So I hear one to my right. I see the shadow and I hear one to my left. I'm not exactly sure where the guy on my left is, but no, there's one to my right. I'm trying to beat up the guy on my right. He swings out. I know there's one, one on my left. Finish that guy off. 
I swing out, I know he's there, or on the bathroom door, and we do find him. R4C ACOG, baby. Now we have some R4C clips with the one X. Find one, fighting two people at the same time. Boom, take out one, we run in, we find the second. Back outside. Take him out as well. So here, honestly, I am just playing extremely aggressive, extremely, because I mean, Ash is fast. You can be aggressive. ADS speed is pretty fast with this gun. So I'm just going in pretty hard and fast and just pre fire when I feel like there's an enemy nearby. Here I push in through blue bar. You find one through the floor right there. I push in. I know that there's not one sunrise because I see my teammate over there. Always play around your team. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily, a lot of you guys may be solo queue, but you don't necessarily have to play like on top of a teammate. You can just see like, okay, my teammates in sunrise. Therefore, there are no enemies in sunrise. So I go through, I don't see anyone at that pixel. I don't see anyone straight across. So I run in really aggressively. We do find the one, just like that. Why am I, getting flashed? I get flashed and I swing in, the gun up, there's a rotate. I hear one lobby. We always swing. So look how, one thing I really want to mention is look how I'm swinging this door with my crosshair up. So it's not just on the door. Look where my crosshair is at right now. Instead of it being on the door, it's here because as I see someone, I'll be able to react to it. So I just see him there. If my crosshair is on the door, I'd have to swing it wide and look where it's at right now. Don't have to move it too much there. All right, another one X of the off board C. We breach the door open, we go inside fast. We find the Solus. See one on the blue door, boom, we take him out as well. So another thing I really want to mention, is a lot of people ask like, how to increase your reaction speed. The biggest thing on how to increase your reaction speed is having your gun up. Honestly, that, that really is the secret to it. So like here, I had no idea the Solus was here, but my gun is up at the archive door. It doesn't take much movement to swing from where I'm at to where the Solus is. And peak his advantage, whoever swings first is going to have a lot more time and, you know, to actually win the firefight. Quick little flick, we take him out. That guy on the blue door, we just barely see him there. We do take that, take him out there. Oregon, ice a little bit opening. Boom, we find one just like that. Just holding on the door right now. We pre fire to our left. You have 150 bullets. There's no reason not to pre-fire, and we find another one. Just like that, 5v2, we go in. So now we're in a situation on Lair. I see a couple people back there. We push in, I rotate around, and we do find him from behind. So now, one theme park, I mean, you can see the headshot already lined up right there. A lot of times people are gonna be crouched if they feel like they're, they are in danger, if they're standing. So most people will end up being crouched. So we do find him like that, boom. I rotate in. See how that guy was also crashed. I thought someone shot me on the uh, arcade staircase. I wasn't sure where he went. We see the warden. We just pre-fire out and we win the gunfight there. Honestly, the rule of thumb here is if you feel like you're about to get swung, pre-fire. And most of the time I will, I will pre-fire crouch head height because most people aren't going to be standing. If they're standing, they're probably going to swing out farther and I can just react to their standing. But if they're crouched, I mean, they're not going to be moving too much. They're just barely picking out just enough to try to take the firefight. So I'm pretty firing head height. And even if they're standing, I will body them down. I mean, you shoot a lot of bullets. So. Okay, consulate in a 1v3 situation. He just kills a teammate. So I swing down. I thought one was on the yellow pillar. We fight the frost. He starts to run away. I check yellow pillar just in case someone does swing me from there. He's not there. We finish off the frost. We still have nine bullets in the gun. So I'm not instantly going for reload. I do pop that reload down. I'm not sure what this guy is. I think they were probably holding the fuser because it's all the way in the back. So where's the mods he going to be in this next part? Is he going to be on the spiral door? Is he going to be on like on the security door or is it going to be the farther door? So I assume that he's not on the spiral door because he's going to be afraid of the spiral walk down. So I assume that he's straight across from me because if he was on the spiral door, he probably would have walked down anyways to try to help out the frost. We do find him. Really, that is basically half of like what I do when, when I'm like entry in like super fast. I'm like anticipating where someone's going to be. Here, the diffuser's left over, way over there, so I check the entire room. I'm checking the angles. 
And then I open up a wall with the ash breach. I'm like, okay, I don't really see him or hear him. And then I hear him on the Visa staircase here. And we do win the firefight. Swing and be swung, baby. So now Ella runs in. So this is the one thing to keep in mind when you are using NACOG. It is very hard to win firefights like this. I mean, look where my crosshair is at right now though. Like literally on his head. But when they're that close, it is really hard to keep like your gun on track. So just be careful when you are using NACOG. We find the thorn. I just heard someone getting kind of close. So I ADS before I get to the door. And then Mozzie, just like that. Love reaching the floor. We use the one X again. We find one. This is why I bring breaching charges all the time. And I think this one was an ash charge. We find the pulse. He's holding an angle. He had no idea I had a on him. Take him out from above. Let me find a third. Killing three of them from above before, without really taking any real like firefight damage. So I love, this is one thing I love about Ash. The, the breaching charges are really good for clearing any type of horizontal breaching. And then you have the breaching charges. So you have five breach. And if I don't need to breach anything horizontally, I can just use my Ash charges for more vertical. So I have five vertical breaching charges. Like think of it like Ram, but like the one thing I dislike about Ram compared to Ash is Ram gives a lot of audio cues for defenders. So like I could get flanked, I'm in danger. With Ash, I'm just like, boom, it's open just for the pressure. And then I'm like watching my flanks. I can hear everything and then I can come back and then watch my vert. So that's what I did. I opened up a bunch of vert, right? And then I was watching my flanks, making sure I was good. And then I checked my vertical holes. And as we saw, you get a bunch of kills doing that. <laughs> okay, look clip. I'm breaching open a window. There's a reason why I do this sometimes is because I know an enemies might be on the other side of this. It just lets me be able to see them extremely fast. Yeah, so it's like that. If I was cracking, if I made it down or shot it open, I wouldn't be able to deal with this guy. Let me take him out. Not much you can do there. Wall is soft. We breach that open with the ash charge. Some bits of frost mat. Clash on my left. Take him out. And then we trade with the dock on my right. Goodbye. So here. Soft wall. I think he impacted that wall. We go in. We find the rook. Wasn't ready for the fight. I open up that wall straight across from us at the piano wall. So I open up. I open up this wall and then rotate around. I open up the wall as I walk through this door to try to catch anybody that's in that room off guard because they might be looking at the breach. No one's there. I hear the alibi on my left. We swing out. So now we're on border. So I do some crazy nonsense. I love doing like hop reaching plays as Ash because you're just so fast. You, you breach in and you can move to a position really fast before an enemy really knows where exactly where you're at. So I hop reach in. There's a clash outside the armory belt. He walks in, I barely missed the shots. I'm getting shocked a little bit. I check my left because Cla you know, Clash it can't really kill me here. Clash pulls his gun down, which I hear off of audio. We pre-fire out. Clash is not gonna win that. And here they don't really know that I'm really in sight like that. We take on one, run to the hallway. ADS speed was slowed down. So like, as you can see on this, the ADS speed is kind of slow. So you just have to be used to get used to like ADS just slightly earlier than you would have normally. Like that, it's still pretty fast. But the, the addition of the ACOG just makes winning firefights like that just so damn easy. All right, here are the final clips I'm gonna leave you guys with. Take one out on my left, so I hop in. We get the wall bang. I mean, not really a wall bang, because we, we did kind of see him there. Always have your crosser up when you swing into the unknown, so you're always ready to defend yourself. So like, as I run through this door, I start to ADS. Where do you find the Fenrir? Spawn killer on cafe. Just keep tapping. Get your kill. I repel in. I'm getting pre-fied. We find one. Kitchen bakery. I see one on my left with a quick jiggle peek. So a jiggle peek, it really is just this. Like this is really simple and easy to do. You don't need to do anything really fancy. You just move in just, just enough to gather intel. So uh, with that little swing out, I saw where the guy was and I come in pre-firing. So now here, multiple people. So we shoot at the Azami. I know the Jaeger is either going to peek the window where he's gonna peek to my left. Peek to my left. I think someone else ended up killing him there, but. 
that were above. We asked charge, not really giving him really any real time to really, you know, readjust to what he was doing prior. We drop down, we find the Mozzie as well. Now it's the 1v1. Ash in a 1v1 is a scary operator because it's very hard to beat an Ash in a 1v1 situation because she's just so fast and her guns are just so reliable. And we find the Frost, just like that. So winning a Firefly like this in a 1v1 situation, it's not overly hard, just make sure when you swing out, check your angles, look where the diffuser's at. So where the Frost is gonna be, I already cleared like mining and train, so I know that he's not going to be to my left. He could be in the pillars, uh, but I would have to swing out like out into the hallway and walk to my left to really be exposed to that. I did hear him somewhat near because he just killed a teammate like probably 20, 10 to 50 seconds ago near top white. So I know that he's either reading door, laundry door, or on the white staircase. So as I go through this, I'm going to check every angle one by one. So I'm only exposed to one angle at a time. So I, I'm like, okay, let's check reading door. He just happens to be there. It makes it pretty easy. All right, that's it today on how to play as Ash. Honestly, pretty simple operator to use, but incredibly hard to master. Ash is probably one of the best, if not the best entry operator in the game. You can deal with any utility you need to. You can work multiple different access points with, on the soft destruction, and you have a lot of speed to get in there really fast and heavy. And her guns, you are going to be able to out TPS and outgun basically any defender in the game. So. Really good weaponry. I mean, again, if you want to run the G36, completely fine. Good gun to use. I've been rocking the R4C because it just has a little bit better in terms of numbers and the recoil is pretty similar. In but it has a little bit more vertical kick, but the uh, G36 honestly has a little bit more horizontal left and right. This is mostly just vertical and then slightly to the right. So if, if you learn how to pull it, pull it down slightly to the left, it's going to be a more stable gun in the long run than the G36 because it's going to be a little bit more like left and right. So I've been rocking the R4C. You can rock whatever you want again, but uh, Ash, really good operator. Definitely recommend at least trying for a little bit. You're going to see a lot of higher end players running around as Ash because Ash is really just like the fast, speedy op to take engagements and win your firefights. So really fun. And that's it today on how to play as Ash. Make sure to subscribe, drop a comment, leave a like down below for more. And let me know what operator you guys want to see next time. Peace out.